What is good YouTube? So this is gonna be my second video this week because I went two weeks without uploading. So I'm just throwing this one up. I was basically inspired by seeing everybody making videos about this Battle of the Bears game of shape with Sean Davis and Sean Hoover and everyone pretty much making videos, coming at Sean Davis for his terrible attitude, the bad judging, and how everyone wants a redo. So a lot of these videos have already been existing. So I'm gonna talk about a little bit of my thoughts on Sean Davis and everything that went wrong. And then later in the video, really cover what these unwritten rules in a game of skate are, just so that people are like really clear because all these videos I've been seeing, everyone's talking about how there's unwritten rules in a game of skate, which I'm very well aware of because I've been skating for so long. A lot of people who skate for a while eventually just become uh, acquainted with these rules. But to anybody who might not know or anybody who wants clarification, I wrote down a few of them. I'm going to be talking about them later. Basically using Sean Davis as an example for why everyone is coming at this man. If you've ever played in a game of skate before at your local skate park or against one of your friends in a driveway or something, you'll know that the attitude of it is very non-competitive outside of Battle of the Barracks. Like, nobody really cares at all who wins. You're pretty much just playing to uh, push yourself, see which flat ground tricks you can land, and just have a good time with your friends. I've actually landed some flat ground tricks, which I've been too scared to do outside of the context of a game of skate but you just try extra hard and it's good to push yourself. It's less of a competitive game and more of like a fun like pastime that's just a part of skating. Outside of the Battle of the Barracks, it's really just a non-competitive thing that can be mistaken as a competition. And when the stakes are as high as they are, or can be in the Battle of the Barracks, I don't know what it's like to compete in Battle of the Barracks, but they probably get a lot more pressure on trying to compete. So I'll give Sean Davis some slack where there's definitely an added pressure that none of us average people have ever experienced with actually competing in something like this. Not to completely write him off, but he is human and I guess the pressure may have just gotten to him. None of us really know him personally. In a normal context, a lot of people see the way he acted as completely inappropriate. Here are some examples of those actions. <laughs> So you got him calling toe touches that barely happen while disregarding his own. <laughs> you got him saying stupid quotes like, it's like chess, man, you gotta have some strategy. Yeah, his overall demeanor and body language. So like sometimes after you land a trick, he'll push away like he just, yeah, he just looks like he did some insane trick in the streets. But he, in reality, he landed some stupid trick on flat. And then finally, you got the pressure flip, under flip dilemma, which I'm gonna be talking about later on how this broke so many of the rules, unwritten rules in the game of skate. Oh. All right, so now I'm gonna be getting into some of these unwritten rules. Number one is pretty much, if you're about to skunk someone, like they have a T and you don't have anything, then it's pretty polite in that scenario for you to not purposefully try to do a trick that you know that they can't do to end the game and skunk them. It's embarrassing for yourself, makes you look like a little jackass, and it's just pretty unsportsmanlike 
and how I described a game of skate is supposed to be. Especially if you don't already know the person. Like if you're playing against a pro and you somehow got to skunk him, I'd probably do anything in my power to win because that'd be sick. But if some kid just walks up to you at the skate park and you decide you're gonna pressure flip under flip because you know that they can't do it and you're trying to win, you're being a chach. And this is sort of exactly what Sean Davis did because he was not really that close to losing at all. It was not T to T and he pulled out his death blow trick trying to end the game as soon as he can so he can advance to the next round and then doesn't even give advice on how to do the trick. He really just like double whammy that one. It's the cherry on top. Yeah, don't do that. It's not cool at all. All right, another one. Don't treat this like a real competition. I mean, I know it's battle at the barracks, but you'll come a lot, you'll come across as a lot more genuine and respectable if you just play a game of skate exactly like how you would anywhere else. Sean lost a ton of fans because of the way he acted. His attitude is plays a huge role in skateboarding and a much bigger role in people being marketable and being able to go pro than a lot of people will admit or seem to know. So the way that he acted just cost him quite a bit. If you already don't get it, just don't treat it like a competition, bro. It's not cool. Tricks like burial flips, pressure flips, and weird shove it variations are the types of tricks that are usually looked down upon if you're playing a game of skate and you're not T to T. So again, if you're about to skunk someone, you pull out one of these tricks, it looks real bad. But if you're just pretty much, it's, if it's also the very first trick that you do, let's say you win the Rochambeau, you're going to skate, and you decide you're gonna pop a pressure flip as your first trick, it already leaves a bad taste in the opponent's mouth. They're like, oh my God, what is this guy about to pull out for the rest of the round? So yeah, there's a, it's not that huge of a deal in some cases, but if you're playing the whole game where you do a burial flip, and the next trick you do, you do a pressure flip, and then you do a pressure under flip and you're just only doing these obscure tricks. It's not nearly as fun as if you do like some quote unquote normal tricks. Like if you do like a kick flip and then a backside flip and then like a full cab or something. So there's all these obscure tricks that you can do to sort of finesse your way to winning, which goes back to treating it like a competition, which you shouldn't do. And these tricks just suck. They don't look cool most of the time. Up next, don't take their trick. If this kid that you've been playing against has been trying, let's say, a fakie tray flip, they're on their fifth try, you got that trick on lock, how big of a would you be if you decide you're gonna do a fakie tray flip and just jug his trick? Like, I don't, Sean Davis didn't do this, but I'm just saying all these unwritten rules. You're just a little, little bastard if you do that. Don't jug someone's trick. Building on that, let's say, that you do a double flip and this kid can barely kick flip or he can kick flip but he can't double flip. He gets nowhere near the double flip and then you decide to go, hey, I'm a fakie double flip and then I'm a nollie double flip and then I'm a switch double flip. You a mighty fool if you do that, <laughs> for real. Unsportsmanlike, just attacking a weakness, going for the dub. They all come back to that don't that golden rule. Don't treat it like a competition. All right, so there's definitely some exceptions to the rules that I stated below. Like, if you're T to T, you could probably bust out a varial flip if you got no other tricks to do. I mean, I've done it a couple times. I've tried to do it. I've tried to get some people, but it's all really up to your discretion of the situation and being able to read a room and not purposefully being a dick. Don't have that, like, uh, like what Gifted Hater said, don't have that only child energy where when things go your way, you're happy, and when they don't, you're mad. At the end of the day, like you better be shaking hands, just being a good sport and just skating, bro. Like, it's, it's not a huge deal, I promise you. I'm sure if I was in Battle of the Barracks, just being there, because I'm not good enough, would probably be enough where I'd just be smiling the whole time, even though I'd probably get skunked. But it's not like, these rules aren't like a huge deal. There's extenuating circumstances to everything. They're just a general rule to follow. Don't come at Sean Davis too hard. He's only human. That was a whack ass game. I'm calling a rematch now. All right, hope you guys like this video. A uh, different style video than I normally be making. Check in next week. All right, peace out mates.